Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to this lecture number 16 on the MOOCs course for consumer psychology. Now, in the past few weeks, what we have done is uh, we have ventured through the idea of what is consumer psychology. We have looked at uh, the psychological process of uh, decision making and we have also looked at some of the psychological variables which affect consumers and marketers into the marketplace. <coughs> so, what we did was we divided the whole unit into two basic sections. Section 1, uh, we dealt with what is consumer psychology, understanding what is consumer psychology in terms of consumer behavior into the marketplace. And we also looked at how does the consumer actually take a decision, so decision process. And for explaining the decision process, we use something called the Blackwell model, the phases of the Blackwell model. Section number 2 in this particular course, we were interested in looking at certain psychological factors which affect the behavior of the consumer and also how these psychological factors affect the behavior of the marketers, the product manufacturers or people who put up products into the market. So, this is the two basic divisions that we have. Now, we started off by in section 1 by looking at what is consumer behavior, we looked at what is the total product concept and we emphasized upon the idea that consumers in the marketplace, they buy benefits, they do not buy products. So, benefit is what the consumer is after, not the product bundles, not the product, not the services. Benefit is the bottom line of what the consumer is actually looking at in the marketplace. And then we looked at what is the total product concept. So, whenever somebody buys a product, what is he actually buying? And there we looked at three different distinctions starting from the core to the psychological ring to the accessory ring to uh, the time uh, division and all those divisions of what a product is and how they are divided into these rings and what are these rings and what role do they play into the product. Then we went into something called market segmentation which is an important part in studying consumer behavior and we looked at how manufacturers segment the market divide the market and how this division helps in making a better consumer and making a better marketplace, making, making better exchanges into the marketplace. So, that is what the intention was. And towards the end of this lecture, we looked at the scientific process of doing consumer behavior research. So, what, how do we do consumer behavior research? That was what the goal was. And we looked at starting from uh, observational methods to uh, the method of uh, experimentation and, and several other methods that we looked into and you can refer this back from lecture number 1 and 2 where we discussed all these things. Then we moved into the decision making process of the consumer and this decision making process of the consumer is divided basically into three parts. So, we started off by looking at how does the consumer actually search for information into the marketplace. So, we looked at the first step in decision making which is recognition of the need or recognition that he needs information, he needs a product, any consumer needs a product. So, that recognition is important and we looked at all the factors which comprises of it. And we moved on to how the consumer actually makes a search into the marketplace. So, basically an external search uh, strategy, an internal stress, uh, stress, uh, strategy and all those strategies of search of how consumer actually gets information about products which are into the marketplace and how does this information affect him and the marketer. So, that was what the first step in the EKB model is. Next, we looked into the fact that when the consumer has enough information, when the consumer gets enough information about products that he wants and his need is recognized about a particular product, what does he do? And the next step obviously here 
is something called alternate evaluation and choice. And so, the next chapter or the next unit focused on alternate evaluation and choice. And in this section, there were two lectures that we looked into and these lectures define the process of alternate evaluation. How does alternate evaluation actually take place? What are the steps of alternate evaluation? So, there are two competing products. How does the consumer actually decide which product to buy and which product not to buy? And further on, once he makes this alternate evaluation, he uses strategies for making this alternate evaluation. How does he go about making the final choice? That was what was of interest in the next section of the EKB model or the next section of this lecture. And from there on, we moved into the section where we looked into how does the consumer make something called post purchase evaluation and post purchase decision. So, after buying a product, after using a product, after consuming a product, how does the consumer decide whether to retain with a product or to move away from the product and find new ones and that kind of whole process. And there we also looked at the whole uh, dynamics of how the consumer uh, can be influenced into sticking with the product and in what circumstances he changes his product or he decides to go with some other product and the whole process of post purchase evaluation. So, you can refer back to those lectures and find detail there. So, lecture number 1 to 9 was focused on to all these process of what is consumer behavior, how to do it and how does the consumer make decisions into the marketplace, the whole process that is integrated into it. The next section that we are presently dealing was those psychological factors which influence the behavior of consumer into the marketplace, a number of psychological factors which is of interest to us. And we started off by looking at a very important psychological factor which is called perception. So, in that section on perception, we looked at what is perception first of all, so, to start with what is the perception. And in this section, in section number 2, what we have been doing basically, what I have been doing basically is the beginning of the lecture, I am trying to explain to you the psychological definition or the psychological meaning of the various factors we are dealing with. And then towards the end of the lecture, I am linking them with various consumer behavior, consumer psychology related uh, concepts. So, I started off by explaining what is perception and the basic psychophysics of uh, how perception really works, uh, per how consumer looks at a product, what are the factors, the stimulus factors which means that product factors, consumers internal factors, something related to stimulus discrimination, stimulus generalization, adaptation level and all those factors and uh, factors like color, factors like taste, factors like shape, form, all those things, how these things actually help the consumer in deciding what to buy and what not to buy into the marketplace. What is the role of these factors? That was what was of interest to us in lecture number 10 and 11, where we are looking at perception. And further on, extending on, we looked at several other kind of perceptions. For example, we looked at uh, price perceptions, we looked at some other kind of perceptions into, into the uh, consumer uh, dynamics, into the consumer behavior realm and how these perceptions actually influence the consumer and the marketer in making a better decision or in making a better marketplace. So, understanding these concepts in detail. Then on, we moved on to two important concepts of memory learning, decision making, co uh, complex thinking and, and, and another uh, cognitive process. So, basically uh, the cognition of consumer. So, uh, four dedicated chapters to each of this from memory to learning to, to uh, uh, the, the complex process of complex thought process or uh, uh, related to how consumers actually make categorization. So, process of categorization and all those things that we dealt into the next two or four lectures that is what we were doing. So, you are looking at learning, memory, uh, categorization and, and complex thinking and those were the factors that we are looking at. And then we moved on to the concept of motivation and emotion and how does motivation and emotion these two factors actually help consumer behavior or actually modulate the behavior of the consumer into the marketplace. So, we defined what is motivation and how, what are the factors controlling it and what are the factors which influence the, the behavior of consumer into the marketplace. And similarly, we define 
what is emotion and how does emotion actually uh, modulate the behavior of consumer or shape the behavior of consumer or the actions of consumer into the market. So, in this present lecture, we are taking another interesting variable, another interesting psychological factor which affects the behavior of the consumer into the marketplace or which affects the psychology of consumer into the marketplace, which makes the consumer do things into the marketplace or studying why a consumer does what he does. So, welcome to this lecture when we are looking at something called beliefs, affects, attitude and intentions. So, the primary topic of interest in this lecture is attitudes and attitude as you know it comprises of three factors. It is called the ABC of attitude and that is the effect, the B, belief and intention. So, A, B and C. C is the cognition sometimes and sometimes it is called intention, behavioral intention or cognition is the same thing. So, let us start our lecture and try and first understand what is attitude and look at several factors of the attitude and then we will merge this particular thing attitude and see it in the context of consumer psychology. So, starting off what is attitude? So, attitude let me give you a very simple demonstration. I will write 5 words here. I write Narendra Modi. I write Ben and Jerry. I write Honda and then I write uh, Air India. So, four different things I write here. One is Narendra Modi, the other is Ben and Jerry's, the other is Honda and this is Air India. Or let me take one more which is for our purpose IITs. So, I wrote four or five things. What do you think about those things? What comes to your mind when you think about that? When you think about Narendra Modi, you have a particular attitude about him. You think that he is a good leader, he has brought progress to India and you will be voting for him and a feeling of goodness or badness or whatever comes to you. So, some belief, some knowledge. When you think about Ben and Jerry, it is a kind of an ice cream, it is an ice cream company. When you think about it, a certain likingness or dislikingness comes to you that comes from previous knowledge. So, whether you want it or not, when you think about Ben and Jerry and if you have had Ben and Jerry ice cream before or for our case uh, Wadilal or some other company Amul for that matter, which is an ice cream company. When you think about the company, you have a partic particular thinking, a particular thought process about it and a particular feeling related with it. Whether you like it, you dislike it and this liking, disliking is what is called the effect. When you think about Honda, you think it is a good company, you might think about buying it, you might display likingness, you might display knowledge about it and so on and so forth. And similarly for IITs or Air India that matter, when you think about them, when you think about IITs, you believe it is a good institution filled with engineers, you like it, positive feeling about it or negative feeling about it, you might think whatever you might think. And so, whatever you think or whatever feeling comes to you when these words are displaced is what exactly is an attitude. So, what is an attitude? When you think about a particular, when you think about a particular word, or you think about a particular concept, idea, image, whatever you think about, whatever comes to your mind, whatever feeling you uh, comes to your mind is what is an attitude, right. So, that is what an attitude is all about. So, generally speaking, this attitude they involve an A, B, C component. An attitude generally involves an A, B, C component. The A component is called the effect, which is the feeling that is generated onto you. So, when I say Air India, what is the feeling comes that comes to you is what is an attitude, is what is the effect component of an attitude. What you know about Air India is the belief component, is the knowledge component and how you feel about Air India is the effect component. So, when I say the word Air India, the feeling that comes to you, the emotion that comes to you, the likingness or dislikingness that comes to you about Air India is what is the cognitive or uh, the effective component. The second component is called the cognitive component. 
which is the belief. So, when I say Air India, you believe it is a government company and so it is a government company. So, most people working into it will be like governments and all the beliefs that you have whether you have traveled through it or not, whether you uh, heard something about Air India from a friend, whether it comes from perceptions of other concepts related to Air India. So, whatever you know, whatever knowledge you have about Air India, where from wherever you have gathered, all those comprises of the cognitive component which is the belief. Right? So, when I say Air India, there is a certain belief that you have the cognitive component and a certain feeling that you have which is called the effect component. And the third component is the behavioral component which is your behavior intention. So, based on what you feel and what you believe about Air India, if given a chance to travel to an airline and which is Air India, how do you react to it is what is the behavioral component. So, given the fact that you are given to travel by Air India, whether you would like to travel by it or not, based on the knowledge that you have and based on the feelings that you have towards a particular company, whether you would like to travel to a distant place to Air India is what is the behavioral component. So, this intention of actually involving in the product, involving in the service is the behavioral intention component. So, most attitudes are composed of this A, B, C part of it. So, generally the, what are attitudes? The attitudes are lasting evaluation. So, attitudes are these are lasting evaluations about what of virtually every and any aspect of the social world. So, this is the definition. This is, so what are attitude? The attitude is a lasting evaluation of virtually everything and anything or any aspect of the social world, be it people, be it idea, be it a concept. So, people about Narendra Modi idea, the idea of traveling with Air India or a concept, a concept like Ben and Jerry's or uh, some other concept, a concept of a holiday in, in, in uh, Mauritius, that concept. So, that kind of a thing is what is a uh, attitude is. The next important thing, so this is what an attitude is. Next important thing is how are attitudes formed? And so, it has been known that attitudes are formed through learning and mostly it is through instrumental conditioning. So, in the chapter on learning, we have looked at what is instrumental conditioning and what is classical conditioning. We also looked at what is observational conditioning. So, generally speaking, attitude is formed through instrumental conditioning and observational learning. So, how does it really work? See, instrumental conditioning is about rewards and punishments. So, when you do a particular behavior, when you do a particular act and you are rewarded for it, you want to do that act again and again because you get rewarded and for certain acts if you are punished you do not want to do that act again and again. This is the simple distinction which is there correct. Now, when you do an act and you get rewarded and you do that act again and again you start feeling good about it, you have gathered or you gather good knowledge about it, positive knowledge about it and you do that act again and again that is the behavioral intention part of it. So, you have developed a positive attitude about it, but if you are punished for a certain act, you start disliking that act, you start moving away from that act, you do not want to repeat that act, act again and again and you have everything bad to say about it and that is what the attitude is right. So, basically this attitude is formed through instrumental conditioning through reward and punishment and sometimes attitudes are also formed through observation learning. So, how does attitude form from observation learning? You see someone doing something good, an act of charity and for that act of charity, he is rewarded and so you learn that doing charity, helping people is going to 
provide you some kind of a reward, whether this reward is an internal reward or an external reward. An external reward could be in terms of money, in terms of uh, some kind of recognition or it could be in terms of internal reward, which is motivations, internal motivations, internal happiness that you get by helping a people. So, through observation learning and when you see somebody doing something and because of that is punished, you will not like to do that and you will feel negative about it and you will have negative knowledge about it. You would not do that act again and again and so you develop a negative attitude about it. Similarly, if you see somebody doing something and they get rewarded, you learn from their behavior to do that act again and again and you start developing a positive attitude about it. So, how does attitude develop then? It develops through either observation learning and instrumental conditioning two methods. So, generally speaking this attitude why do we study? The study of attitude is because attitude affects our overt behavior. Most of our behavior is influenced by attitude and that is the reason why we study attitudes and that is why this psychological factor is being considered in this course. We are looking at attitude because the attitude of the consumer decides how he is going to react in the marketplace. The attitude of the consumer decides how the marketplace, how the marketer is going to reshape the marketplace and attitude also decides whether a particular consumer is going to buy a particular product. And so, when when once a, a marketer knows that he can position his product in that way, that will come to later on. There are certain theories also, there are a lot of theories which define how the marketer influences or how the consumer behaves into the marketplace, which can be guessed from his attitude. So, there are two key aspects of attitude. So, once we have once we know what an attitude is, an important part to study is attitude change. Once somebody has an attitude, once a consumer has a particular attitude, the marketer is in the market for selling his product. So, let us say Amul Kulfi you ate and you got a stomach upset. Now, Amul wants you to retain as a cust customer and because of that you develop a and so it, it had happened multiple times and so you develop a negative attitude about Amul. Now, Amul wants to keep you as a consumer. So, what should it do? It should try to change your attitude towards Amul by doing some things right and so that is what is important. Studying of attitude is important because the study of attitude change has to be looked into. And so, another important aspect that we have to look into here is something called attitude change. So, two important aspects of attitude is how do we change attitude of people, right. So, two key aspects of two key aspects of attitude are persuasion and cognitive dissonance. Right. So, let us move to the next okay. and we will look at persuasion here and we looked at cognitive dissonance here. So, let me first explain what are these. Persuasion is using an external medium like a magazine, like an ad like some kind of information into the marketplace, like some kind of pamphlet to change people's attitude. So, persuasion is that method. Persuasion is a, a, a way of changing people's attitude by using written messages, by using uh, TV, magazines or uh, some other kind of ads. It is basically making persuading people to change what they believe in or change the feeling about a particular thing. On the other hand, cognitive dissonance is a process where people change their attitude through an internal process, an external process is not there. So, people self change their attitude, an external medium is not required. So, the basic difference if an external medium is involved to change people's attitude is called persuasion, but if an internal medium, if people change their own attitude through some process that is called cognitive dissonance, that is called dissonance and that changing of that, that particular thing attitude leads to the uh, leads to the lowering of this cognitive dissonance. So, how does persuasion really work? So, as I said persuasion is using messages, TV ads 
magazines to change people attitude. So, what are the factors which affect or what are the uh, factors which help in making an effective persuasion, so that people change the attitude. First thing experts, it is believed that experts are more persuasive than non experts. If using an if an ad uses an expert and that expert asks you to buy a particular product, you are more prone to change your attitude toward that particular product than if a non expert is used and that is why you have people like medical doctors who actually promote a particular medicine. The idea of soft sell, messages, advertisements which are not meant or at the core of it which does not appear to change people attitude are actually more capable of changing people's attitude than messages which are meant to change people's attitude. So, if some advertisement comes in and says buy my product because it is going to do this, that is not effective in making people change the attitude and buying a new product. Then an ad which gives you enough reason or does a soft sell, right. So, gives you some uh, concrete reason, but does not actually bang on your head to change peop, uh, your attitude or to change the way you see a particular product. Also, attractiveness and we call it source attractiveness. So, source attractiveness is another reason or another factor which change which is more persuasive. So, if the source if the person who is asking you to change your attitude if a hero heroine uh, famous cricketer a famous footballer comes in and say ch says you to buy a particular product you will start feeling good about that product and start buying that product or uh, start thinking about that product change your belief change your thinking about it, because attractive sources are more persuasive and then lead to faster attitude change than non attractive sources. Distraction, if people are distracted while they are gaining information about a particular product, particular information, they are more prone to change attitude than people who are concentrating on a particular product or con concentrating on a particular information piece. Also rapid speaking people rapid speaking amazingly is one of the important factors which change attitude of people and emotional messages. Emotional messages change attitude faster than known um, uh, emotional messages. So, these are some of the factors which can change or can persuade people to change their attitude. Right? And so, there are two basic ways in which this persuasion really works. There are two approaches, there are two cognitive approaches which make persuasion work. One is called the central route and the other is called the peripheral route. To persuasion, what does it mean? The central route uses something called the systematic processing. and this uses heuristic processing. What is the meaning of all this? So, this persuasion how does it go forward? How does pe how are people persuaded? There are two ways to persuade people by using one of these factors. One is through the central route, the other is through the peripheral route. So, what is central route? When people are made to focus on to a particular message or people are mo uh, made to reevaluate their feeling in a very conscious way it uses a central route of changing people's attitude. So, you want to change people's attitude towards BJP, give them enough information, credible information through a credible source and make them think and make them feel. Once they use their own mind, when a, con when a concept is very dear to someone right? and when enough information is provided and people start employing their mind thinking about that concept, thinking about that idea and because of that they change their attitude, that particular way of changing attitude through persuasion is using the central route. But suppose an idea, a concept, a particular person is not that important. Suppose you are buying a new pair of slippers, which are not very costing. And so, if you want a company comes in who is making a new slipper and he wants 
people to change their preference for the old sleeper to their to the new sleeper which they are selling if that is what they are looking forward for they might use the peripheral route in the peripheral route what they will do they will bring an attractive source like Salman Khan he says buy this sleeper that is it people do not really need to think what this sleeper is going to offer people really do not need to feel or indulge into information which is providing by the product manufacturer. So, once it is people if, if people are involved in a concept in a in an idea and they put their head into it and because of that they change their attitude it is the central route, but if people are influenced if people are made to change their attitude about an issue which is not important to them it is generally the peripheral route which is used for making attitude change. And similarly, there is something called the idea of cognitive dissonance. So, what is the cognitive dissonance? This is involved in how we change our own attitude. Right? And so, let me give you an example. One of the ways in which cognitive dissonance happens is something called induced compliance. So, what is cognitive dissonance? Cognitive dissonance in very briefly speaking, it is a state where you believe something and you are doing something else. right? So, if people believe something, but they say something else that is cognitive dissonance that is the state is cognitive dissonance or people believe something and they believe something else a negative. So, they are they hold two attitude together two alternate attitudes together or they uh, hold an attitude and a behavior which is inconsistent with each other. So, they say I like a particular thing, but when you are asked to do something for that particular thing you do a completely different thing you do something an act you act in a way which shows dislikingness this is called cognitive dissonance. So, when you say something and you and you do something else this is what is cognitive dissonance. And so, cognitive dissonance actually happens through induced compliance. What is induced compliance? Let us say there is a friend of yours who is wearing a sweater which is not a very good color, but then personally you believe that the color is very ugly and you do not like this sweater on the person, but then looking at your friend's face you say oh I like it. And so, here what has happened is you believe something else and you are doing something else and the discrepancy which has been created by saying something and doing something believing something and saying something else is what is called cognitive dissonance. This is the unrest and this happens because you believe something and you are saying something. This is what is called induced compliance or your boss uh, preaches an idea of a product sell you believe that this is a very foolish idea it is going to be doomed, but you are working in the company and you cannot say that in the face. And so, you say, say that is a very good idea. So, once you say something and you believe something the discrepancy which is caused the anxiety which is caused in your head is what is called cognitive dissonance. So, once this induced compliance happens we get involved into something called attitude discrepant behavior attitude discrepancy because you believe something because once you do this induced compliance you do something which is against your attitude which is against your belief and that leads to the change in attitude. Right? So, you believe something you are saying something and so once it happens a number of times you start questioning yourself saying that maybe I believe something else maybe what I uh, believe and what I am doing since so, the difference is there. So, what I am doing may be right and so what I am believing is wrong and so you change your attitude. right? So, what is cognitive dissonance? It refers to the feeling we experience when we notice a gap between two attitudes that we hold or an attitude and a behavior that we are doing. So, how do we solve it? Once we have this kind of an attitude discrepant behavior we either so, once we are into this attitude discrepancy, we either change our attitude or behavior. First thing, next we look for additional information which supports our attitude that we are holding. So, either we change our attitude and behavior or we look for a, a new information which supports our attitude or what we can do is we can trivialize the matter.
So, if you have this feeling that you have lied to your friend because he is wearing a different color sweater which you do not like really and you have said something false to him, one way is to change what you say, the other is to look for additional information and ask other people whether they feel that, that the sweater was good or not or the third way is to trivialize the matter saying that this is not important to me. So, this is how we you change our attitude and these are called the direct te tactics of attitude change. And another tactic that we can use is called the indirect tactic of attitude change, where what we do is we leave this attitude behavior discrepancy intact and we try thinking something positive. Instead of thinking about that what you said and what you believe and how you feel about it, leave that matter aside, start thinking something positive. So, when you said, when you lied to your friend that, that, that the sweater is very good, so instead of thinking about that, you start thinking about the fact that when you go home, you will get uh, cookies, you will get a good AC to sleep in and something positive about it. So, this is an indirect method of changing or getting away from this attitude discrepancy. So, this is basically what is attitude and this is basically how attitude really functions. So, let us dwell into, go into the idea of attitude and how these attitudes really work into the realm of consumer behavior. So, let us start with the first factor which is called the belief and as I said, what is belief? Belief is the cognitive component. This is the knowledge component, what you know about a product, what you know about a particular service, what you know about a particular issue at hand, that is what is belief. So, belief is the cognitive component of consumer attitude and let us see how does this belief this knowledge, what role does it play into the behavior of the consumer or the consumer psychology. So, a consumer belief as I said is a psychological association between a product and a brand and an attribute or feature that particular brand has. It is an association between a product and a feature about a brand and an attribute about that brand. For example, Patanjali is a product and it is herbal and because herbal products are good for use, Ayurvedic products are good for use, it is good for health. So, uh, Patanjali is a good company. So, the attribute that Patanjali has is herbal and the psychological association with that product that you have is this herbal nature plus the fact that the knowledge, the belief that herbal products are Ayurvedic products are good for health. So, this knowledge plus the fact that Patanjali is Ayurvedic in nature and the knowledge that Ayurvedic products are good for health. This association between this attribute that this product has, Patanjali products are herbal and herbal products are good for health, combining these two together is what is called the belief. That is particular what is the consumer belief. A consumer belief is that particular thing. The fact that the attribute is there in the product and the fact that the attribute that the product has, has something good, right? A psychological association between brand and attribute or feature that a particular brand has. So, this belief that herbal products are good for health and that Patanjali is a herbal product and relating this two together. So, Patanjali is good for health is how it is carried about and that is what a belief is. So, beliefs are the cognitive based on knowledge as opposed to affective. So, beliefs, consumer beliefs, consumer knowledge, consumer uh, idea about the product, those are basically cognitive, these are knowledge based. Consumer belief is knowledge based, whereas consumers affect how you feel. So, what you know about Patanjali? as herbal product is the belief component and it is based on the knowledge that you have gathered because the ads say that they do something, you have looked at their composition of uh, what a Patanjali product has and based on whatever information you are getting, you believe that it is a herbal product. On the other hand, how you feel about Patanjali is the effective component. So, when you see a Patanjali product, when you use a Patanjali product, the likingness or dislikingness that develops to you because it is a herbal product because the knowledge says that it is a herbal product and herbal products are good for health, but how you feel about it is called the effective component or the effective part of the attitude. Now, the stronger the association of feature or attribute with the product or brand, the stronger the consumer belief. The more strong, the more inform correct information that is given to you about Patanjali product, the more number of herbs that are added into the product, the more names of herbs that are that are added into the product. For example, Shank Puspi there. Uh, Dhruva is there, all these products are herbal products, all these products are herbs and when you get this information that these are included and when, when you get this enough information that these are included into a particular Patanjali product for example, Chaman Prash. 
so you have gold you have silver and all those things silver is uh, good for immunity and all, all those facts when you know about these facts the stronger that you know that these things are there into the product the more stronger belief that patanjali is a herbal product and more stronger the belief that it is going to be good for you because herbal products are ayurvedic in nature and ayurvedic has no side effect which leads to better health and so that is what it is so the stronger the association of features or attributes with a product of a brand the stronger the consumer believe about that particular brand that is what is of importance here so how do we change consumers belief what is the way in which a belief of a consumer can be changed now strategies change consumers belief so a consumer has a particular belief about a particular product how do we go about and change it in the marketplace we have looked about attitude we looked out attitude change so how do we change the belief component of attitude there are several ways which can happen and one of the ways in which attitude of people consumers in the marketplace is changed is by product positioning the way you position a product into the market and into the consumer's mind will decide whether consumers attitude towards the product changes or not whether consumers believe what the product changes or not and whether consumer shifts his idea shifts his the fact that he wants to buy the product or not that 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 particular thing is of interest so let's look at some of those strategies which are used by marketers to change consumers belief consumers knowledge about a product one is by product positioning your product with attribute so if you position the product by a particular product attribute that can change the belief of the consumer that can change the knowledge of the consumer that can change the way consumer reacts to a particular product for example association of a particular attribute or a brand if we are a hp manufacturer and the very fact that hp is a good company which leads to excellent prints and so if i manufacture hp promotes this printer by saying that or promotes this product by saying that it is a good printing company it gives good printouts and so this printout the idea of that good printouts or cheap printouts or fair printouts if hp pushes its products through this attribute then people will look at if they are thinking about printer they will think about hp if they are thinking about hp they will think about it's a good company which gives out good printouts and so people will actually buy hp and hp will gain into the printing company so positioning the product positioning uh, your product through a product attribute also positioning a product by consumer benefit if you can position your product in such a way into the marketplace so that a particular consumer attribute is highlighted that can change people's attitude or people's belief consumers belief for example associating with important consumer benefits natural protein saves health so if there is a company which manufacture shampoo and it is saying that it has protein this com company has protein what you can do is this protein shampoo how should i so basically protein milk protein is good for health so how should i manufacture how should i position my product i should position my product saying that look my my particular shampoo has uh, hair protein or milk protein which is going to uh, enrich your hair lead to lower hair fall and so if you use my product even twice or thrice uh, a week that's not going to lead to hair fall because it has protein so a good consumer benefit the consumer benefit is that protein leads to better health or better hairs and so even washing it twice or thrice will not lead to hair fall that kind of a thing positioning by intangible benefits i can also position my product by through intang intangible benefit and that can actually lead to change in consumers belief associating with a intangible benefit for example maruti with value for money i can say or i can, maruti can actually position their product as a value for many things so i'm maruti can say my cars are value for money it has nothing to do with design it has nothing to do with uh, something else uh, design or uh, good mileage or some other kind of a thing it will say that my product is value for money and so why maruti why because value for money so what i have done is i have looked at an intangible benefit now the value for money is intangible because you don't know how to measure an intangible value for money right and so it is an intangible benefit i can also position my product or marketers can position my product through price and that can also leads to change in consumer belief how can that happen associating with particular prices or price range for example big bazaar can always say that come to us we are retailers who sell things in cheap or people can think about uh kaisers which is a german company which sells uh 
products. Uh, in India, you would be going to a good supermarket, right? So, Big Bazaar or fashion at Big Bazaar FBB against Raymond's, right? So, Raymond's are high class products, high uh, 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 price products and so they will give you high class uh, goods or high class clothes. On the other hand, I am looking at fashion at Big Bazaar FBB which is a Big Bazaar kind of a thing, extension of Big Bazaar and Big Bazaar is more or less like a retail store for everyone and so it gives you good fashion or manageable fashion at manageable prices. On the other hand, looking at Raymond's or Pantaloons or some other company, Mark and Spencer offers you good products, expensive products at expensive prices with a style. So, the same thing that that kind. So, uh, positioning by price. So, people who are, uh, so when I say uh, comfortable clothes, good style clothes at lower price in Big Bazaar, that, that actually changes people's belief about Big Bazaar that it offers you style also. It does offer you some kind of a style. I can also position or people can, marketers can also position by their product through an application. For example, associating with particular use or application. Get rid with sports drink. So, I can particularly have a manufacturing company, I can have a particular kind of a product and relate to a particular uh, uh, application. So, I can say get rid of only sports drinks. So, only sports people are going to most sports people drink that or uh, some other product, coffees for uh, decaf for some kind of people, that kind of a thing. So, uh, I can position my product through a particular application. So, decaf is for those people who are hard working, who, who do not, who are uh, not in, who are caffeine addicted. So, caffeine addicted group take Nescafe decaf. On the other hand, people who are sports take get rid. On the other hand, people who are uh, uh, diabetic may use some kind of a uh, different oil for that, that leads to vivo, for example, vivo fortune which lessens your uh, diabetic tendencies. And so, that kind of a thing I can use, I can position my product by that application and that can change people's attitude or people's belief about the product. Positioning by a particular brand user. So, I can also use associate with a particular ideal self image of the user. For example, I can say Nike's, Nike products are always for sports person, ath athletic type people or I could say uh, Raymond's are for style people and so people who think them should be style, they will go, they will have positive attitude about Raymond's or that particular attitude about Raymond saying that only people who are stylish will go in there uh, or if I go in there, then I will find stylish products which will change my style, which will change my self image. So, I can use a brand user, I can use a positioning view based on brand user. I can position my product by celebrity recognition. So, what I can do is I can use associate my product with a particular celebrity and the nature of the celebrity or the brand image of the celebrity gets associated with it. So, associating with celebrities, for example, Tom Cruise with adventure. So, any product that Tom Cruise uses, any product which is related to Tom Cruise gets automatically related to adventure because Tom Cruise is believed to be a celebrity which actually enjoys adventure and so I can position my product based on that factor. I can position my product by brand personality associating with a personality of the particular brand. For example, Patanjali is natural. So, all products that Patanjali makes everything that Patanjali makes is natural in nature. So, what I have done is, I have positioned my product in terms of brand personality. The brand personality of Patanjali is a natural product, a natural Ayurvedic product which does not offer you any kind of health problems, that kind of a thing and so that is what Patanjali has to offer to you. And I can also position my product through product category associating with a particular product category, for example, Maza with a kind of a soft drink. So, un or, or uh, seven, uh, 7 up with the un cola kind of a thing. So, I am associating that maza which is now a drink uh, a mango drink I have associated that with a particular soft drink kind of a thing that it is a soft drink. So, I can do, do that also. I can also position <coughs> my product by associating with competitors. So, what I can do is by purposefully association with competitors to share consumer perception. Say Hyundai is the second best selling car. So, I will say of course, we know that Maruti is a the number one ca uh, selling car, but what I am doing, what we are doing is number two, which basically what I am doing is I am basking in the glory of Maruti somehow. I am basking in the spotlight of Maruti and so I am pushing my car, Hyundai is pushing its car saying that it is the second best. If not the best, it is the second best. So, all those uh, features that Maruti is offering is also being offered by Hyundai. And I can also position 
by country or geographic location. So, associating with particular country or geographic lo location for example, saying that France uh, everything from France comes with a perfume climate that kind of a thing. So, wine from France has a particular climate has a particular kind of a thing. So, country of origin I can position my products from the country of origin for example, Chinese products are cheaper, French products are more classy, German products are more robust that kind of a thing I can position my products. And so, products are generally positioned using any of these combination of strategies. So, when I, am when I am positioning my products, when I want to change people's belief, knowledge about a product or what they think about a particular product, I can use any of these strategies in combination or simply one strategy to change people's attitude that is what I can do. So, how do I change people's uh, belief by using any of these strategies. The second component of attitude is affect which is the feeling that you have. So, belief is about what you know, belief is about the knowledge that you have about a particular product, but affect is how you feel about it, what do you feel about a particular product and that is what is important to us. So, affect is the emotive component of an attitude and so we look into those methods of how affect is changed, how people's affective component is changed to change people's attitude. So, basically what is effect? It is the way we feel in response to marketplace stimuli such as brands. So, how do you feel about Raymond's? How do you feel about Ben and Jerry's? How do you feel about Hagen Dyes? How do you feel about Nike? So, the feeling that you have when you think about this product that based on the knowledge that you have, how do you feel? Will you feel? Do you feel good? Do you feel liking? Do you feel disliking? Do you feel a threat? All those things that that is there, all those feelings that generates upon you is basically what is effect. And that is that is uh, a major component of attitude because that decides whether you are going to take that product or you are going to leave that product. So, unlike belief effect is emotive rather than creative in nature and so we have seen that effect is basically is emotional based. Now, this effect is made up of belief plus the way we feel about it as I said this effective component of attitude is dependent on what knowledge you have. The based on the knowledge that you have about a particular product will decide the way you feel about it, right. So, the way you feel about a product has a lot to do with a lot to work with what knowledge you have about that product. And so, for example, I have taken this level of specificity of effect. For example, how does this effect really change from? Uh, so, you can have uh, effect for a particular product, you can have a product effect for a particular product class or you can have an uh, for a particular category of products for a particular section of product. For example, look at this level of specificity for product and example, for example, product class car, how do you feel about car? So, this is one way of looking at an effect. Product form, you can have economy cars, what do you feel about? So, you might feel positive about cars, but you might not feel good about economy cars or uh, in terms of brand. So, you might feel good about cars, but if it is Honda card you might not feel good or you might feel good about Honda card. You can also have an effect for the particular model. For example, Honda Accord LXI, I do not like Honda, uh, Honda, I do like Honda Accord, I do like the car, I do like economy cars, but I do, do not like Honda LXI, I like say VXI or some other brand. And so, these, these are the level of specifications because it may so happen that your effect may change in any of these forms. So, this is the level of specificity. You might feel good about Patanjali, but you might not feel good about one of its products. Let us say Patanjali ghee I do not like, but Patanjali I like and that is what I am trying to tell you here. And so, at the level of brand model situation also the Honda Accord LXI at the Honda dealer in the town you might not like it. So, it, it could be also at the place of where it is being sold that can also have an effect or that can also have something to do with the specificity of the effect that you are dealing with. Now, there are several theories which have been proposed that actually look at how a changing the effect or how manipulating the effect affective component leads to change in attitude. And we will be looking at three theories. The first theory that I am going to discuss today is the functional theory of attitude and how this functional theory of attitude actually leads to change in the effective component of the attitude and further change in the attitude of people. So, what is the functional theory? Marketers seek to influence effective responses by creating messages that append, appeal to consumers on the basis of one or more of the four type of responses. So, most people, most marketers when they put a product into the market, what they tend to do is give them information and this information creates a feeling in them. And so, they, what they do not want to do is by looking at the response that these consumers are doing to their product by 
managing this response by studying this response by manipulating this response by understanding this response they want to change or they want to uh, create an attitude about their product so that is what we are looking at so there is a functional theory which says that people when they look at a particular product get information about a particular product uh, a product group from the market what they do is they produce a particular kind of response based on the effect that is generated uh, through their product and so by studying these responses the company the manufacturer is actually looking at changing people's attitude so what are the kind of responses that people do the effective responses that people do when they look at a product or get product information the first kind of response is called adjustment now it is the tendency to develop effective responses that lead to most efficiently towards perceived rewards and avoid most conveniently any puni uh, perceived punishment adjustment is a response that people show when they receive information or when they have information knowledge about a particular product and that that comes from this adjustment comes from the feeling that develops because of this information and so what is this feeling it is the tendency of people to develop effective responses so to develop feelings that lead to about a particular product service or a product group or a category or anything that they lead to so they develop that kind of effective response they de develop that kind of uh, emotion towards uh, towards that product service or whatever it is to so that the perceived reward is increased and perceived punishment is decreased so that reward is increased they they develop that feeling about a particular based on the information so that they get the maximum out of it they get the maximum uh, benefit out of it and avoid the most punishment out, out of it let's take an example a consumer who learns that he has a heart condition starts using less salt to lower sodium content it's that kind of a reaction so if a consumer understands that he has a uh, heart condition he starts looking for uh, salt which has lower sodium and so he shifts to those salt uh, salts which has lower sodium and so what manufacturers then do is because he needs lower sodium and so what manufacturer can do is change their attitude uh, towards salt saying that there are now two categories of salt one is the normal salt which has the normal levels of sodium plus there is another class of salt which has low sodium which are for people who are suffering from heart conditions and so that way the attitude towards salt changes the person who was who who believes that uh, salt con contains sodium which is going to affect them in some way they change their attitude towards salt that they can also eat salt or uh, defining a, a <coughs> sweet in such a way that people even diabetic people can uh, can can use it coming up with ben and jerry's or hagen dazs ice cream for the diabetics right where even people who are diabetics can 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 consume these uh, sweets so that way adjustment so people we can we can create a product we can create an attitude about the product in such a way by coming up with a new product which creates to a favorable attitude towards the product so the attitude towards ice cream remains the same attitude towards the company remains the same what happens is that now people start believing that i can now eat a hagen dazs ice cream which is for people who are diabetic right so ice creams don't change you like ice creams you like the company and you also thank the company because the company is giving you an opportunity to use that to to uh, eat that particular product so one of the ways is adjustment the second response that people have in the functional theory is called the ego disp resp uh, defense response and what is this response it is a means through which people try to realize personal goals and images this is another response so when you when you when you buy a particular product when you have a particular product or you get information about a particular product the feeling that you have one of the responses due to that feeling is the ego defense response and what is that disp uh, response it is that response which makes us realize personal goals and images for example positive attitude towards self enhancement products like fashion products personal grooming and all why do we do that why do we uh, get fluttered to this or some company says that uh, there is a, there is a good ad coming up which says that even plus size clothes are good that saves your ego defense so people who are plus size it says or it says black uh, uh, brown is the new uh, fashion brown is the new thing i don't want to get fair uh, brown is okay with me brown is the new fashion if that is what it is so these companies are actually promoting ego de defense response so that people's attitude changes people's attitude gets so people who are not fair they also have this feeling or they, their attitude towards the particular product they stick with the particular product saying that this is also uh, good or the, the product manufacturer comes up with the idea that brown is the new uh, thing in 
right or or uh, only white is not the new thing in that that kind of a thing or companies which says that plus size clothes we we are the company which is making you plus size clothes which means that even people who are obese people who are a uh, little bit on the fatter side, they are accepted in the society and companies are manufacturing clothes for them. So, that kind of a thing which why they are doing that to prevent this ego defense response to, uh, to actually uh, uh, and they anticipated this ego defense response because if they do that then people's ego defense, people's uh, self worth or this, this self image will be highlighted. So, th they focused on the ego defense response and they come up with a new product and people's attitude about, about that company which was earlier manufacturing uh, for example, one of these companies is uh, Levi's. So, they are coming up with uh, the X size um, or the extra size jeans, which actually now, uh, so earlier people who were who were a little bit on the obese side, they had a negative attitude about Levi's, but since they have come up with this X size or the extra size, people now have positive about, the, even the obese people or uh, people who want to the obese side, they have a positive attitude about uh, this company Levi's and this is through the ego defense response, because they believe that the company is also listening to them and the ego defense is also respected because they, they do not say it is for fat people, it says that it is for the excise people and they are, they are also beautiful kind of a thing. So, uh, this is the another kind of response which manufacturers can look into and how do people feel based on their effective responses, they can use this for changing people's attitude. Also, people's attitude can be changed through value expression by studying people's response or people's value expression. And how does that happen? Consumers display their own values to the external world, for example, concern for environment. So, people who have concern for environment, they will start using bicycle and so once you know that these people have concern for environment, what you tend to do is, this is the value expression thing. Try selling them or try telling them that the product that you are selling that, that has concern for environment. So, star systems on electronic products, 3 star, 4 star, which is uh, or green, uh, uh, <coughs> the, the green symbol on products, which says that people who are concerned for environment say actually buy your product and their attitude towards the product will change. They believe that you concerned for the environment, you have concern for the environment, they have concern for the environment and so they will buy your product and their attitude towards that, that uh, the attitude that they had about you changes. Uh, uh, for example, some company which which were earlier not manufacturing had no concern for the environment now says that they are uh, they are donating so many uh, uh, dollars for saving the environment or uh, for that matter. Uh, uh, the green la label sticker on the on their product which says that it is recyclable and so people who have concern for environment their value expression is is denoted by that so those people will also have positive attitude about this particular company which now says that they have concern for environment and the fourth thing that fourth response that consumers do and which manufacturers can study to change people's attitude is application of prior knowledge now this has both uh, positive uh, message and negative effects that is po uh, the positive part of it is prior knowledge, the positive part is me message filtering and the negative part is stereotyping on effective responses. So, application of prior knowledge when a person uses pr prior knowledge, one of the ways that this prior knowledge can help is by filtering. So, using prior knowledge a cons consumer can filter what information to take in, what attitude to form what a particular product. So, that way it is helpful, but if this prior knowledge can also have a negative consequence. For example, consumers will uh, <coughs> will stereotype. So, if you use a particular kind of yogurt and the yogurt was not very good, you will believe that all yogurts are of the same kind. So, if that is what the consumer is feeling, if that is what the consumer has attitude about yogurts, what you can do is as a company, what you can do is you can provide them enough information, new information, fresh information which says that yogurts are good and then companies, your company is having another different kinds of yogurts and so prior knowledge that you are using is not enough. So, use more knowledge, give them more knowledge, so that the prior knowledge then leads to better attitude or leads to more stronger attitude towards that particular product or product class. So, this is the second uh, <coughs> model of uh, attitude or uh, this is the second model of attitude change uh, uh, through effect, the effect component that we will go to see, uh, but we will discuss this model in, in the uh, the, uh, this particular model in the upcoming next class. So, let us review what we did in, 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 in the uh, present class. So, in the present class what we did was we looked at, we picked up an psychological component which is called attitude and this uh, the components of this attitude, the belief which is the cognitive part, the effect which is the emotive part and the intention which is the behavioral part 
of this attitude we looked at what is attitude we we dealt uh, or we dwell into what is attitude and what are the components of it and so on and so forth so basically in the first part of the lecture i explained to you what is attitude what is attitude change how does attitude change happen and <coughs> what are the two ways of attitude change through dissonance and uh, and uh, cognitive dissonance and persuasion and towards the end, end of the lecture what we did was we looked at this attitude this consumer attitude or attitude as such as a psychological factor how does it merge in the context of or how does it play in the context of uh, the, the consumer behavior so we looked at uh, what is attitude and we looked at how consumer attitudes is change or consumers belief the belief component of attitude is change so uh, and we also discussed a model uh, which was the <coughs> uh, functional model of attitude change through changing the consumer's effect. In the upcoming class, we will look at two more models of effect of effective change which leads to change in the attitude of the consumer and we will also look at the intention part which is the third component the behavioral part. So, how does behavioral part or changing something into the behavioral part changing the behavior of the consumer leads to attitude change and formation of new attitudes or formations of new thinking about new product class. So, uh, for this class it is uh, this what we have been doing in the next class we will continue with this lecture. Thank you.